Okay, I'm going to try to make a video here to explain the cross-pollination myth that's going around that we have to explain every day. Uh, this is particularly for a group, uh, a gardening group that I'm with, and every day the question comes up or the topic comes up about a misshapen fruit or miscolored fruit, and they believe that it was cross-pollinated, which cross-pollination does not occur in the year the same fruit is made. And this is what I'm going to try to explain. What happens, this year you plant a seed. That seed grows, makes a plant. A little plant comes up. This seed had 22 chromosomes. This new plant has 22 chromosomes. The plant begins to grow, puts on more leaves, more leaves, more vines come off of that. Now this is for pretty much any fruit, be it a cantaloupe, squash, zucchini, watermelon, uh, anything that puts a fruit on pretty much does this. This is, this is how it works. Uh, as the plant continues to grow, it gets bigger, puts out more runners, more leaves, and eventually one day it decides it's strong enough to put on some fruit. And if you'll notice, you've seen it before, the little bitty tiny squash will come on and it'll have a little blossom on the end of it. Now let's take this over here and blow it up. That little baby squash that's on there is a replica of the parent, or I'm sorry, it's a replica of what it's going to be when it grows up. This little squash is tied to the plant. It has 22 chromosomes. It already knows what it's going to be when it grows up. What it's going to look like, what color it's going to be, all that information is there. Inside of the little squash, if you could cut that in half, you would see little tiny seeds. All these little tiny seeds in there. There's a whole bunch of them. If you could cut it crossways, slice it across that way and open it up, you would see rows of those seeds. It'd be in a shape like that, down through there, down, down through the squash. Each one of these little seeds have a tiny little tube that is tied up towards the blossom. Every seed has that little, like a fallopian tube that goes to the blossom end. And the blossom is closed when it's a baby, and as it matures, the blossom opens. Once the blossom opens, it has access to the pollen to get into the seeds. Each one of these seeds have 11 chromosomes. Every one of them, 11 chromosomes. The squash has 22, the seeds have 11. The pollen that comes from the male flowers, which you've seen, they just come on just as a, as a single flower with no fruit on the end of it. Just a little flower comes on there. It doesn't have the fruit like, the, like this one does. Bees take the pollen grain from the male flowers, bring them over here. Can you guess how many chromosomes the pollen has? 11. So the seeds have 11, the pollen has 11. Pollen pollinates the seeds. Now the mature seed, or the, the fertilized seeds, have 22 chromosomes. That is what you will plant next year to start all over again. The seed will be 22 chromosomes. It already knows what it's going to produce, what it's going to make what it's going to look like. So, in order for these seeds to, for this fruit to cross pollinate, it would have to get pollen from a different kind of plant. Some of you think that your cucumbers are crossing with your squashes or your tomatoes with your pepper. Though it's not totally impossible, it, it is very, very rare that that would occur. Um, it's just, it's, it's like one in a billion chances. And even if it did, it wouldn't show up in this year's. You would have to take these seeds, replant them next year, then the fruit that comes out would have 11 chromosomes from its mother plant and 11 chromosomes from the pollen that pollinated it, giving it 22 chromosomes, which would be half zucchini and half squash or whatever it is that you were thinking it pollinated with. But you wouldn't know it this year. You won't know it until you plant these seeds. This fruit, when it pollinates, and it realizes that it's pollinated, closes these little tubes each time a seed pollinates. It always starts at the blossom end. 
and it pollinates and the tube closes and the next one will pollinate and that tube closes. Sometimes if it doesn't get enough bee work or there's something wrong with the, with the blossom, maybe the blossom closes too early and shuts it off before it gets pollinated all the way down. In which case you'll have odd or misshapen fruit. Sometimes you'll have a cucumber that looks like a squash because it didn't pollinate all the way to the end. In that case, what's happening is, as the fruit is pollinated, these little ovary sacs, as I like to call them, because basically that's what they are, little, or little wombs that house these seeds, become impregnated with the pollen. And as the, the uh, seeds pollinate, they begin to swell up, pump up full of fluid and, and water. The plant pumps it to it, begins to pollinate, swell up, pollinate, swell up, all the way out to the end, and your fruit becomes uniform like it's supposed to look. If it doesn't pollinate all through, all the way through, then you'll get these misshapen fruit. I hope this clears things up. I hope we get this straight. Feel free to share this video with any other gardening groups or anything else where you're having the same topic. Thank you.